thank you for being with us. And uh, <coughs> we're in the story of Joseph, and we've come to probably the most critical part. Now, Joseph, as you know, is Jesus, as you know, is the Son. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you talk about the evolution of the New Age. Let me tell you something. One of the most bizarre, startling things I have ever seen. And I was telling Alfred and Robert and Joan about it yesterday. I don't, there is a fundamentalist Christian preacher who is a woman. <coughs> her name is Marilyn Hickey. I don't know if you've ever seen her. She is very fundamentalist. Uh, she has big following. She's on television all over the place. But she's a very much in the mold of what we've come out of, you know. I turned on television yesterday, and I went into shock. There, Marilyn Hickey was standing teaching the Zodiac what? from an extremely positive standpoint. And she was saying, now this isn't fortune telling. God has written the story of the universe in the stars. And she said, and it goes from Virgo the Virgin to Leo. And she showed the signs and the stars exactly what we did here, you know, in, in the past. And I was telling them yesterday, I says, wow. See, you get a lot of born-again people who will watch that and say, this makes sense. Watch me do it, and they'll say, this guy's a cult. That's all right. That's fine. The point is, that message all of a sudden has found its way into the hardcore born-again fundamentalist, and there she is on Christian television teaching the Zodiac. It's, it's an amazing thing. And uh, so anyhow, here we go. And, and God bless it, you know, and I, I just think it's a wonderful wonderful thing and let it just spread and I you know now it's got a good shot since it's, it's gotten its foot in the door obviously so Joseph now Benjamin is the child the name Benjamin means son of my son of my right hand okay the 12 brothers of the 12 signs of the zodiac and those brothers came to Joseph and Joseph said, wait a minute, there's one missing. You did not bring the child. Unless you bring Benjamin, you will not be set free. You will not be given food. Now, this story is an allegory. It's saying that we must bring the son of the right hand. You say, how do I do that? It is the child who emerges at the right hemisphere of the brain. When you go into meditation, this starts to come to life. All these things that we're talking about, about dogs and about nature and about learning and about understanding them and feeling, and some of the very strange things that Joan and I spent an hour in a car yesterday talking back and forth, and it was just flowing. I mean, we don't do that that much, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's you talk about who said what. Or, we didn't do that yesterday. We went to the beach. We went, we went of course, we had to take Daisy to McDonald's for hamburgers and then we went down to the beach and we were talking about things which were really amazing to me. But that's the son of the right hand. You don't have to worry about, and it'll see this in the story, how this happens. If, 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 if you start in, in, in your meditation and giving up yourself, and we'll follow this story, but this is the premise of this. Unless this son of the right hand, unless this energy of the right side comes to life, comes over here, then you can't be fed, you can't have understanding. Let's follow the story going to page 39, okay? So the brothers now, it gets to the point where the brothers have brought Benjamin to Joseph. That's already been accomplished, okay? So this is that point of meditation. This is the wounded child which is being brought and then it becomes the child of promise. Try to understand something if you can. When you talk about the wounded child, who is the wounded child? Jesus. Jesus is the wounded child. When the wounded child then is brought to that point of extinction, it becomes the Christ, the child of promise, the divine child. The crucifixion takes place in here, say. So it's Benjamin coming from the left side to the right side. Jesus coming from the left side to the right side. As Joseph came from the left side to the right side. As all of the patriarchs came from the left side to the right side. That's what this is. So at this point, the brothers have brought Benjamin to Joseph, okay? So you, you can get the picture, you know, if you, if you can, you can kind of get the picture. Here they're all standing in front of Joseph, you know, and the child is with them, Benjamin. And here is the promise, and I want you just to spend a moment 
And let's just put our heads down and let's just meditate and, and, and just for a second, because I want this to get to you, because I think it's a very critical part of the story. So I'd ask the Lord and ask the universe to just be with us in a moment, just this very instant of silence, that that door would be opened up and that wisdom and understanding would be ours. Right now, Genesis 44, that's where you were at, okay? Here's the brothers standing in front of Joseph. They're getting ready to take Benjamin and travel back to Jacob, you know, with the food and everything. They got what they wanted. And here's Joseph over here. You can imagine him standing up on a, whatever, on a platform, and he's telling him, now, as they get ready and collect all their things, they're getting all, everything all together. Yeah, we all ready. Yeah, oh, everything is good. You know, yeah, he liked Benjamin. Uh, let's go. Well, let's go back home now. At this point in Genesis 44, Joseph talks to his stewards. Joseph is talking to his Egyptian helpers over here. And look at what he says in Genesis 44. And he commanded the steward of the house, saying, fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry. You know, fill up everything. The brothers, give them all. But then he says something in verse 2, which is very strange. He says, put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, and his money. And they did, according to what Joseph has said. In other words, what he's saying, put my silver cup in Benjamin's sack. Put stuff, put, put food, put money in all of their sack, but put my silver cup in Benjamin's sack. And the plot thickens here. So here, the silver cup, so that's very nice. You know, Joseph gives Benjamin not knowing, nobody knows that he puts it in there, but he puts it in, and here they all head out, going down to Jacob, and not knowing that in Benjamin's sack is this silver cup. Genesis 44, 4, they've left, they're gone, they're on their way, and Joseph calls his men, and he says, go after them. Go get them. Genesis 44, 4. And when they were gone out of the city not far, Joseph said, follow after them. And when you overtake them, I want you to, 40, 44, 5, open Benjamin's sack and say, oh, is this the way you repay good with evil? What's the silver cup doing in his sack? And look at 44.5. Say, is not this sit in which my Lord drinks and whereby he divineth? To divine means you tell fortunes with it. Joseph, the hero of the, the Bible, probably the biggest hero of the Old Testament, was a fortune teller. And he used to put colored liquid in the cup. And he would spin the liquid, and the way the liquid settled, he could tell fortunes. But here he's taken this silver cup in which he drinks and in which he tells fortunes. He hid it in Benjamin's sack. Then after the brothers had left, he sent his troops out to round them up and say, hey, what's that? What are you, what are you doing? Stealing this out of uh, Joseph's... Uh, what's going on here? What kind of people are you? And here the brothers, look at Genesis 44, 8. The brothers said, well, well, the, the money's in there, but we brought it out of, from our house. How, how can we steal? Look what it says. How should we steal out of the Lord's house silver? We wouldn't do that. Now, there's the riddle. Let's take a two things. Joseph's silver cup. Two things to think of. Number one, why... Did he hide it in Benjamin's sack? Why didn't he just give it to them and say, hey, here. Number two, why did he make it look like it was stolen? What was the purpose of it? So that's what we want to look at. 
Now this is the important part as we start to unravel the riddle. Remember, the silver cup is put into the sack of the child, who is Benjamin, who is the son of the right hand. Okay? And in Genesis 44.10, the first part of the answer comes. And he said, let it be according unto your words. First of all, verse 9. With whomever of your servants it be found, let him die. And we will also be my Lord's bondsmen. This is the brothers telling this. And he said, now also let it be according unto your words. He with whom it is found shall be your servant, and you shall be blameless. Whoever among the twelve has the silver cup must wind up to be the servant of Joseph. And we know in advance that the silver cup is found in Benjamin's sack, the child. Who has the cup? The child has the cup. Who is given the cup? The child's given the cup. The brothers all came, 12 of them. They brought the child. The child was given this cup. And now the statement is made that whoever has this cup must stay as the servant of Joseph. It's not of any interest to Joseph for the other 11. He doesn't care about them. He only cares about the child. And he has made this point by hiding this silver cup in Benjamin's sack. Genesis 44, 12. And they searched and began and the eldest and left at the youngest. And look at Genesis 44, 12. Look at it with your own eyes. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. And everybody went screaming and yelling and carrying on, and they returned them back to the city, and there they had to meet Joseph. So now we've gotten to this point. We haven't answered any of the questions. We don't know why the cup was hidden, and we don't know, you know, what was the purpose of making it look like it was stolen, but we've all come back. Here's Joseph standing there, and here's the brothers again, and here steps out the brother who is going to do the speaking, whose name is Judah. Now, Judah represents the spirit within you. And here, as, you, as you'll find as we get to the point here, you'll begin to understand. Judah, the spirit, in Genesis 44, 16, Judah meets with Joseph. Okay? And Judah says, what, what can I say? What, how can we clear ourselves? Uh, we are the Lord's servants, but, but look what he says, but... This cup, you, you found this cup on, in one of us. What can I tell? I don't know what to tell you. And then Genesis 44, 17. The man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. Now this is what Joseph says to Judah, to the spirit. Forget all of these people. Try to forget all of these people. Try to understand this. This is your divine ego. This is your divine mind. This is the Christ in you, okay? This is the Christ in you. It is, now, it is now speaking to you. And it says to Judah, it says, look, in Genesis 44, 17, the cup, the man in whose hand the cup is found shall be my servant. As for the rest of you, get up and go in peace. I don't need you anymore. I don't need the Spirit anymore. I don't need all of your signs anymore. I don't need all of your personalities. I don't need all of your cares. I don't need all of your theologies. I don't need all of your religion. I don't need all of your spirituality. I don't need all of your teachers and your preachers and your books and your magazines. I don't need all of your churches and all of your denominations. I got what I want. I got the child, Benjamin. Get out of here. All that God wants from anybody in this room, all that God wants from anybody who sets foot on this planet is that part of you that is known as the child. <coughs> the rest of it is irrelevant. It doesn't count. And you can't study, don't you? Isn't this amazing? There is no book written to tell you how to bring the child. There is no book written to tell you what the child is. There is no way that you can learn how to do it. But you must bring it. It's an amazing but beautiful thing. The Lord is not interested in Judah, the Spirit. Judah, the Spirit, has done his job. He brought the child. Remember something. Let's go back for a minute to page 38, Genesis 43, verse 8. Remember what 
Judah had said to Jacob. And Judah said in verse 8 unto Israel, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go. That's the job of your spirit. Your spirit's job is to bring that holy innocence, that child. And don't think of the child as you would of a child who's born in your... Think of that as an impulse within you, which is at the left side, which is wounded by all of those things that have come against you through all of your life. The misunderstandings. My God, do you know that God is... When I say to God, what the hell's the matter with you? You've you got people killing each other, eating each other. You've got people blowing up each other. You've got cancer attacking each other. What's the matter with you? Do you realize that there is on our part a complete misunderstanding about the what God had intended in the very... We, none of us have gotten this thing. Do you think that we understand what this is all about and still we separate into groups and we separate into churches and we separate into nations and we war and we... They're over there in this Bosnia place and they're just lobbing shells and killing people. Nobody knows. Old ladies are running, dogs are running, kids are running. Nobody even knows who's pulling the trigger. Just bombs are flowing. Bombs are exploding all over the place. And it always, do you think we've learned anything? We haven't a clue. And this is what's required. And you can't read it in a book. There is no teacher who has ever been born. There is no author who has ever been born who has ever been able to discuss this because it's beyond the way of discussing. Buddha himself said, there's one thing I know about this. It can't be taught. Are you willing simply to discipline yourself to be still? The rest is God's. It will, and this is what you're going to learn in this story. This is the beautiful part. We haven't gotten to the point. Why was the cup hidden? Why did it make it look like it was stolen? Watch what happens See, as we try to solve this riddle of that silver cup. It's an amazing thing. So Joseph says to, to Judah, you guys go. I'm not interested in any of you. Go. The only one I want is Benjamin, the child, the son of the right hand. That's all I'm interested in. The rest is gone. Now, let us review Joseph's actions in hiding the cup and then descending on the brothers as if it was stolen. Understand something you're talking in ancient mysticism, metaphysics. You have a silver cup, okay? Number one, gold, that, the, the color gold is the divine mind. God. Silver is the divine mind human. Silver represents that part of you which is the highest part. You don't have gold. When you reach the point within you of gold, you've gone to the right side. You've gone outside of your, your corner mind, outside of your... So silver represents that human aspect of, of divinity. Gold represents the God aspect of divinity. That's the one thing. So what this is saying, the location of the power is in the human mind. That's why it's silver. That's why it's silver. It's silver because it's saying to you, this is located. Look, look, Jesus is crucified, right? Everybody, Jesus is, where is he crucified? What's the name of the place that Jesus, you know what Golgotha means? Skull. Do you know why? Because the crucifixion happens in the skull. Okay. I heard a couple of ooms, so we struck a chord. And that's very important because that means, oh yeah, I understand that. Okay? Right. So this silver cup is given to you. That means you have been elevated. It's like Albert talks about. This is evolution. You go from a brass or a tin cup to a silver cup. I think each one of you, I don't mean to say this too much, but I don't mean to put a burden on him, you should sit next to this man and ask him to talk to you about evolution. <laughs> and you learn. Okay. It is the cup the Lord drinks from and divines. 
Okay, so we get at the silver cup. The cup the Lord drinks from. You are now, when you receive this silver cup within your human mind, able to consume the wine, which is the Spirit. Okay? That's the power of that which is given to you. Now you can take into you that which is the stuff. And the stuff like Joan and I were talking about, the stuff that Albert and Ethel, we were talking about, the stuff that people out there can't hear. They can't, they can't even conceive of what we were talking about. That's what you can consume. That's what you can take into you. And look what else this cup. Is not the cup that this Lord drink, my Lord drinks from, and divines. The power of divining is the power of understanding. The power of prophesying. You understand what's happening. You understand what's coming. You understand what is the nature of the universe. You understand what is the nature of the cosmos. So what has been given to the child? The child has the power to consume that which is God within you. The child now has the power of prophesying within you, of understanding the things that are, of understanding the things that are coming, of understanding the ways of, of nature and the cosmos. This is what is given to the child. That's Joseph's cup. He snuck it into the bag of one of the parts of you, and the only part of you that he was interested in touching with is the child. He does not care what, what seminars you attend. They can't qualify. He doesn't care what churches you attend. He doesn't care what schools you go to. He doesn't care what books you go to. The child doesn't go to seminars. The child doesn't read the books. The child doesn't go to these churches. The child doesn't. And that's the, the child that sucks its thumb and has no knowledge of any of the things that are so important for all of us to study is the one who gets the cup. He doesn't know any of the, the great New Age authors. He doesn't know any of the great fundamentalist teachers. The child doesn't know. The child plays with blocks. The child pulls dog's tails. The child eats carpets. The child does all of these things. The child doesn't know about all of these things. And that's the one who receives the cup. You're, you're worrying about who's going to pay the rent. You're worrying about what are you going to do with the doctor bills. You're worrying about there's something wrong with the car. You're worrying about there's something wrong with the house. You're worrying about there's something wrong with your mother-in-law. You're worrying about there's something wrong with your husband or your wife. And the child is on the floor and he doesn't care. It doesn't make any difference. Look at the difference. You and I have a tumor, God forbid. We stay in the house. We pull the shades. The doctors are coming. The nurses are coming. Gigi has a tumor this big. She's at McDonald's. She's, at the, she's up there at the post office looking at a lady coming out of the... It doesn't make... Because she doesn't know. It's not important. The child gets the cup. All of us smart things are told by Joseph. Get out of here. I don't need you. Oh, but I know this. I don't care what you know. You know Fakata. You know nothing. But you get the kid the cup to this little kid. And the kid, what you talk? This is the cup in which you can drink the new wine. And this is the cup in which you can divine spiritual messages. And the little kid has got the cup in his mouth. What is he kid? The point being made here, how do you get this through? We have studied, we have cathedrals, we have documents, we have doctrines, we have all these legislative things from governments and congress and churches, and it's a complete nightmare. We have to get on the floor. Put your thumb in your mouth. Goo goo guy guy and the cup will be in your side. And forget all of all of this big shot stuff that we know. See, it is not given to the spirit. It is not given to any element of the human personality, not religious, not traditional. That which is the most important thing in the universe is given to that part of you which knows absolutely nothing. And that's why we have never found it because we've sought it with our minds. We've sought it with our intellect. We've sought it with our intelligence. And we've never found it. 
And that's why both fundamentalists and New Age people that attempt to use power and techniques miss so badly. Only the inner child who manifests nothing. And remember that this silver cup is God's power. And the power of God then is given to the child within you. How, you should jump up and down. Do you realize what this means to you? You don't have to know nothing. You don't have to know how to read a Bible. You don't have to know how to listen to a tape. You don't have to know how to go. All you have to know how to do is sit. And that's the hardest thing of all, isn't it? <laughs> Stay still. Ha! <laughs> can't do that. Oh, now here's the key. Here's the key. The cup is not given in the open. It's given in secret. And it is not optional. It's not optional. Okay? The cup is given in secret. Listen very carefully. Once you enter into this meditation and you make a, this commitment that you are prepared to separate from all of your beliefs, even your New Age beliefs, when you are prepared to separate from all of your heroes, all of your teachers, when you are prepared to separate from all of your religions, all of your connections, when you are prepared to separate, then you are going to Joseph, then you are going to Christ, then that child, watch this very carefully, that child who is within you no longer becomes you, is no longer a part of you, that child now becomes the property of God. It is no longer any of your business. Once you have made that commitment, that child that is within you is God's property. You are sacrificing the child. You remember when Abraham went to sacrifice the child? That's what that's all about. It has nothing to do with killing a kid. The firstborn. Jesus is the wounded child. Christ is the divine child. The wounded child dies. The divine child is resurrected. All new, all things have changed within you. It becomes God's property. That cup is hidden because it is given in secret. When you come into a meditation, it's totally up to you. It has nothing to do with me. It is none of my business. I don't tell you what to do, how to do it. I tell you to listen to God. I only convey to you what Buddha said, what Krishna said, what Jesus said, because I know nothing more than that. But I can tell you this. If you come into a meditation and you are totally willing to bring that child, if you are willing to bring all of your beliefs, all of the things, all of the opinions, all of the feelings, all of the ideas, and you're willing to sacrifice it all, if you're willing to give it all up, you bring that child, Joseph will stand there. Jesus will stand there. They will know whether your heart is pure. And if that is pure, that child inside of you will be given that cup. And that child then will belong to God. And that will be the resurrection. That will be the communion. That will be the total change of your life. And that is a very hard thing to do because we are glued to things. We are glued to ideas. We are glued to our opinions. Totally glued to them. But if we're willing to come out from all of it and stand in the middle of absolute nothingness and say, I am, here is my child, take it. Not just words, but take it. When that child is taken, it becomes God inside of you. And that's exactly what the end Hiding the cup simply means it is given in secret as Jesus says in Matthew 6.6 6, when you pray into the closet and close the door. And when you close the door, you close the door on every teaching you've ever had, on every instruction you've ever had, on every belief or opinion you've ever had. And you're willing to be sacrificed totally to this thing which you call God which dwells within you. You've given up bondage to the world. And you've taken upon yourself bondage to God. Oh, you say, that doesn't sound good. Look, we have this little dog, Daisy. Daisy has given up her freedom. She is in bondage to Joan and I. She is not allowed to go except where we allow her to go. She is not allowed to eat except what we allow her to eat. She is not allowed to do the things that she would ordinarily do as a free person. But, but... She 
has warmth. She has love. She has compassion. She has food. She has a big king size bed. She is. Because if she is set free to the things outside, she will scrubble in alleys. She will become diseased. She will become sick. She will fight with others. And then one day she will come down the street and there will be a big monster with a net chasing her. And she will wind up in a jail or in a prison and she will die in poverty. And so she is freed from the bondage of the world and she has taken upon herself the bondage of those who act as God. And she submits and she is filled with a long life of love and absolute compassion and care. She can enjoy life every day. That's the difference. Will you give up the bondage that you're into to all of your friends, to all of your systems, to all of your religions, to all of those things which have held you and made demands of you, and instead submit this bondage to God? If you say yes inside of yourself, he would take you. Think of that. Your entire being, the brothers within you, the 12 aspects of your personality, must understand this child was brought to God. God has waited for lifetimes for you to bring the child. Now it is, and the adoption is made in secret. But remember what happened. As soon as you said yes, God took this bag. Thank you, Ethel. And he took inside and he put it in this cup. And he put it back and he said there. You didn't have a choice any longer to say, let me think about this. You didn't have a choice to say, well, now wait a minute. No. You made a commitment. You made a total commitment. You bared your soul and you received the cup. Now you belong to God. And your entire being will change. You want to have, you want to know if you've got the cup? Do you think the way you used to think? Do you feel the way you used to feel? Do you look at things the way you used to look at them? If you do, you can be sure your bag is empty. And now the spirit Judah pleads for the child. The spirit pleads for the child. Verse 18. Let not your anger burn against your servants. And it goes on in verse 20 and talking about the children. And in, in verse 25, Judah says, look, Father said, to buy food, we can't now go back without our brother. I, I, I can't do all of this. Let the servant go with me. I, it, it's not fair. And Joseph is going to say, look, no, I keep the child. And Judah is going to say, take me instead, kill me. That's the reason that it makes it look like the cup was stolen. Because there has to be a commitment from you to say, look, I'll give up everything. Take me. Are you willing to sacrifice everything for the child? Judah at this point is willing to say, take me, kill me, I'll give up. And once that point is reached, that the rest is willing to give itself entirely for the child, then the child is free. Then that which has been tried so hard in other ways is accomplished. You are willing to give yourself for the child. You are willing to commit yourself for the child of Benjamin. Go back to verse 25 for a minute. Joseph shows how Jacob relented and allowed Benjamin to come. In verse 31, Judah states, if Benjamin's not part of the family when they return, Jacob will die. In verse 33, Judah pleads that he be kept in bondage. In other words, hold me, but let Benjamin go. The spirit has completed its job of bringing the child. It's ready to sacrifice itself. A total communion of the spirit and the mind it has taken place and when this happened look what the beautiful part of it all of you are walking around. you know what I'm hearing from everybody every day people say gee you know I talked to somebody I never thought they would start talking this way you know you watch on television and this woman is teaching this Zodiac. all of these people are starting to feel this inside of them says you know what's happening as the child is coming from you 
what happens next week is one of the most magnificent things and something that you've been waiting for all of your life. Listen to me so carefully when you hear this. Next week in this story, after the child has been given, after the sacrifice is willing to be made for the child, after the child receives the cup, when this has taken place, Joseph next week reveals himself. Do you realize, do you know what this means? In your life, there will be inside of you a revelation saying to you, do you know who I am? And the brothers would say, and he said, I'm Joseph, your brother. Do you understand? What you've been chasing after is the closest relation closest part of the family you could ever conceive of. And you are going to be in shock when you see the face and understand the name and identity of this person that you've called God. Because the child in you will cause that which is God within you to reveal himself to you. All because you brought the child and he receives the silver cup in secret. And then you were willing to make a commitment that indeed you would sacrifice everything. Everything. I was thinking of Gigi. It cost us a lot of money the other day because of this. For somebody that never had a penny. Never had a penny. Never knew. And I said to Joan, if she ever came out of this, with all of this money that was spent, with all of these, she would walk out the door and sniff a garbage can. That's right. <laughs> Never knowing all of this crying. Why cry? Oh, I'm a person. Talk to Albert. We're about to evolve into higher persons as the dogs and all of these wonderful creatures that are other people. See, they're just people that look different than we do and think they think just as important but on a different level. That's what that. So next week, Joseph will look right in your eyes and you'll be in for the shock of a lifetime because you will understand. You have found that which you've lost, which is a close part of you. Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. We'll be right back. Thank you. Bye-bye.